Hello guys. Oh, I've got some ragged news. Such good news. Let me start the story off from, from the beginning. So, I will pretty much 100% set I am going to be getting a different car so that I can save a bit of money back and then obviously when I'm a bit older, my insurance goes down a little bit, then I can go back up to something like this in future. I was looking at something like an EP2, um, possibly an EP3, but the, the, like we said before, the power is pretty much near enough the same. Uh, the same litre engine, uh, the insurance is just going to be as bad. Anyway, I posted on a vlog, on a Honda vlog, about if I got this other car, what would be um, the best things to do to the car brake-wise uh, for a track day. Now I explained in the post that I'm going to be getting rid of this car and showing like I was showing the EP2 as the car that I'd probably be getting. Now as much as I had loads of helpful information on, on things like changing the brake pads to performance brake pads, upgrading your brake fluid, that kind of thing, I had just as many people telling me that I should look into different insurers. Not just insurers on comparison websites, but insurers where you phone them up directly. Especially performance car and modified car insurers as well, which I'd never really tried before. So it did get me wondering a little bit, and I thought, why don't I just, why don't I have a go look into that anyway? Just to see what it would be. I was still set on selling the car because of how much money I was gonna get back anyway, but either way. So I phoned up a few insurers and it turned out that I pretty much sliced the cost, sliced the cost, sliced the cost completely in half um, of what I'm paying now. So I thought, great, it's cut it in half. I could get an EP3 because I'm going to save that much more money from the price of the car, and I'm going to get less insurance on it. So anyway, went to tell the girlfriend. I had a big long chat about it, and she pretty much just said, well, "Why are you even getting rid of the car?" I said, what do you mean, won't we just benefit from the money? And then we kind of worked it out that through like depreciation and, and the fact that I'd be modifying the EP3, and if I did want this again, I'd be selling the parts for a lot less than what I'd pay for them. And then in the long run, I'd lose money. So it just clicked in both our heads like, no, we can keep this. I can keep this car. So the final conclusion has been, the FN2 is going nowhere. It is not going anywhere. It's still going to be mine. I'm going to try and keep it for years to come. And have as many adventures as possible with the car I love and the people I love. So I'm absolutely chuffed. I'm so chuffed. Let's get out of the car. Let's get out of the car. Oh, yes. Such a good feeling. Such a good feeling knowing it's not going anywhere. Now, like when I was talking about when we get the EP2, which is not gonna happen anymore, I still wanna go on a track day. I wanna go on a track day with this uh, because I'm gonna be keeping it. I won't be scared of modifying it, thinking, oh, what if I have to get rid of it and sell all the mods? I'm gonna keep it as long as I can, like I said. So we can do things to that, which means there's gonna be install videos, track day vlogs, events, Jap Fest this year. Definitely gonna go to that at Silverstone possibly get a better track time there but definitely going to see a lot of really 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 nice Japanese cars this year is going to be absolutely amazing I, ap I, I really can't wait and I can't wait for you guys to see it all as well so I hope that was just a bit of good news maybe it was bad news maybe you hate this car and you want me to get rid of it but for me it's good news so so please subscribe um, and like comment whatever you want to do with any of uh, of my videos and subscribe to watch any more of them on my channel and um, until next time like I always say enjoy the rest of your day bye you, you.